Welcome to the FanDuel. Hurry up. It's Maria Marino for Fantasy Sports Network. And number fires, Jim Sonis is on hand as we continue to anticipate this championship weekend in the NFL. We're actually going to talk about both the NFC championship and the AFC championship single slates. Uh, we'll start with the NFC. We're going to give you a pair of studs, a pair of mid-tier plays, and a pair of value plays courtesy of Jim. Let's start with the first stud, and it's at quarterback Drew Brees. Yeah, I really think that when I'm looking at MVPs for this NFC Championship game, it's hard to it's hard to whittle it down because you got Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Jared Goff, and Todd Gurley. You got a lot of good guys who you could hypothetically put in your MVP slot and get that that bonus for them. But I think I'm leaning towards Drew Brees right now because if we look at him in his home games this year, Brees has had at least 16 FanDuel points in every single game he has played at the Superdome this year. He has also had some upside, too, with at least 30 points in three separate games here, including the game he played against the Rams uh, back in week number nine. He has had 30 or more FanDuel points in two of the six games that Ted Ginn has played this year, and one of those games is actually outdoors when he was facing the Giants. He topped 40 in that game as well. So the upside is there. I love the safety that Drew Brees has. I love having this game indoors. So Brees, pretty expensive at $16,000, but I think he's still worth that, and I think that more often than not, he will be the guy I wanted to plug in into that MVP slot. You mentioned the last time the Saints played the Rams, and to be specific, Drew Brees had 346 yards, four touchdowns. Now, this time around, he's projected to reach over 21 fantasy points on FanDuel. Another stud for the NFC Championship slate. It's at running back and another Saint, Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I think that when you look at the composition of the value plays in this slate, you're going to be able to afford at least two of these studs. So you can get in. If you want to go with the two quarterback lineup and go with Brees and Goff, you can definitely do that. But I also love a lot of what Kamara did in that divisional round game against the Eagles. And I loved his usage there. 16 carries, four targets for Alvin Kamara. He played 69% of the snaps. And yes, that was a game script that set up for more Kamara than it did for Mark Ingram. But I kind of think we could see the same thing again here, at least based in the way the Saints use those running backs the first time they faced the Rams. In that game against the Rams, uh, Kamara got 19 carries. He had five targets and scored three touchdowns. And all those touchdowns were in the first half of that game to give the Saints a pretty big lead at the halftime. Looking at uh, Michael Thomas, I think that he is at least intriguing here. But if you look at this from a matchup perspective, Thomas is now facing a defense that does have a key to leave again, which makes the path for Thomas a little bit tougher than what he had last time. So if I'm deciding between the Saints studs, I kind of think I lean towards Kamara over Michael Thomas for this single game slate. I know Thomas blew up last week. He was phenomenal. But Kamara had that long touchdown call back by a penalty. And the usage that I would expect from him here is pretty tasty so I would lean Kamara over Michael Thomas but all these guys are really in play for this weekend and, and as are the guys on the Rams side as well Kamara also had a great performance when the Saints played the Rams last time around with over 100 total yards three touchdowns once again he's projected to reach over 100 yards and over 18 fantasy points on FanDuel let's move on to some mid-tier options for the NFC Championship slate of DFS come Sunday. The first one we're going to talk about is Robert Woods. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the first meeting between the Rams and the Saints. And in that game, if you'll remember, it was Cooper Cup's first game back from injury. And in that game, he had this really long touchdown, caught a pass, ran down the sideline, broke through a tackle. And it made sense because Cooper Cup had the best matchup on paper in that game. But with Cooper Cup being out, Robert Woods is essentially taking over the Cooper Cup role running a lot of routes from the slot. And that's where you want to attack the Saints defense is via the slot. If we look at Robert Woods, since Cooper Cup's injury, he has 23% of the Rams' total targets, along with 27% of their deep targets. So a little bit of upside to go with him as well. Now, when you're looking at him compared to Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks, in general, is going to be the guy with higher upside because he gets these deep balls and he can convert on those and has a lot of yardage upside. He did really well against the Saints in their first matchup, also a revenge game for Brandon Cooks, but 
I think that the other the other part to consider here for this game specifically is that Cooks is going to have, I would assume, the full attention of Marshawn Lattimore. And that is a super tough assignment. Lattimore is a super fast guy, should be able to keep pace with Brandon Cooks. So I think that that's what pushes me more towards Robert Woods than towards Brandon Cooks. They're both very close in salary. Woods checks in at $11,500, and to me, on this slate, that is very affordable. So in this middle tier, I do prefer Woods over Robert or over Brandon Cooks, and I think that Woods, a pretty good play overall. You definitely hope that Robert Woods doesn't have all the attention on him from the defense. That should be reserved for Brandon Cooks, and Woods is projected to reach over 12 fantasy points on FanDuel. He also gets plenty of targets, and he's converted a lot of those into receptions consistently week to week. Another mid-tier option we want to talk about, it's Will Lutz, a kicker. I find <laughs> it interesting that you're pointing out a kicker, Jim. It's it's not yeah. usual for you. Yeah, FanDuel got rid of kickers for 2019 or 2018, but they're back as we talk about single game slates. And honestly, like using kickers has been a pretty good strategy throughout this year for the single game slates because they have a really good floor. And I think that's especially true for a guy like Will Lutz, who is favored and playing at home. He's kind of like Drew Brees, where whenever he's favored and at home, I want this guy on my rosters. And that is the case for Will Lutz for this weekend. He has averaged 8.6 FanDuel points per game when he has been uh, at home and playing with Drew Brees this season, so excluding Week 17, and Lutz has hit double digits twice, so a little bit of upside in there as well. I think the question that you have to have here is, do you want to use Will Lutz or Mark Ingram, Greg Zerline, the other kicker in this game, or C.J. Anderson? And all of them have at least some path to upside because you can get a touchdown out of Mark Ingram or C.J. Anderson, and uh, you can get some field goals out of Greg Zerline. But I think that of those four guys. Lutz has the safest floor, and that's what makes me like him more than those other players. Now, I think you could totally opt for Ingram or for C.J. Anderson and hope that they score a touchdown, but I think the safety in Lutz is really attractive to me because it means all I have to do is hit on my other four players in the lineup, and whereas with uh, Ingram and C.J. Anderson, I'm kind of banking on them performing as well. So I'll take the floor with Will Lutz, plug him in there, and uh, just, you know, kickers and domes, Maria. I'm never going to turn that down. Of course you're not. I mean, just the fact that it's a dome, we know you're already <laughs> yep. salivating. And I think what's good about Will Lutz is even if uh, Drew Brees and the Saints aren't marching down and scoring touchdowns all the time, you know, you have to think that they're going to be getting into field goal range. Um, so whether it's a shootout and he gets a lot of uh, PAT opportunities or uh, they're settling for field goals, it benefits Will Lutz. Let's move on now to some value plays for the NFC Championship slate. How about Josh Reynolds of the Rams? Yeah, Josh Reynolds is $8,500 for the single game slate on FanDuel, and I think that's a pretty good price for him given the volume he has gotten since the Cooper Cup injury. The production for Reynolds has not always been there, but the volume has been. He has 16% of the Rams' total targets since that injury, 29% of their targets, at least 16 yards downfield, and 23% of their red zone targets. So what you get with Josh Reynolds is the possibility for him to catch a deep ball but also the possibility for him to get a touchdown because he is getting volume in the red zone. His body is kind of built to feast in the red zone as well. So it kind of makes sense that Reynolds would be a factor down there. Reynolds in the divisional round win for the Rams played 87% of the snaps. So the Rams went back to running uh, the three wide receiver sets. They had been running the entire season. That's encouraging for Josh Reynolds. Now I think that with Reynolds, it's kind of a similar discussion we had with Will Lutz where the upside isn't huge. But he did have 19.5 points back in week 17. So there is a little bit of upside to Josh Reynolds. He saves you a lot of salary, $8,500 gives you a pretty decent floor and allows you to spend up for guys like Kamara in stacks with Breeze. So I think that that's the biggest value for me for Josh Reynolds. He may not give you a lot of upside himself, but he allows you to get upside elsewhere. So for me, $8,500, I am totally willing to pay that for a guy with the floor of Josh Reynolds. A relatively safe play. Good chance he'll get in the end zone, which would be fantastic. But if not, the price tag definitely makes it worthwhile. And one more value play we want to discuss at the wide receiver position. It's Ted Ginn. And we've talked about him before, Jim, as just another option for Drew Brees. Absolutely. And it's a really good option to have as well, because this offense just seems to work better 
when Ted Ginn is out there. He can stretch the field and, you know, allow Michael Thomas to eat underneath. But we also saw last week in that game where if Ted Ginn catches that first pass and converts into a touchdown, it's a huge day for him. So Reynolds doesn't have upside, but I think that Ted Ginn really does. And I think that the floor actually isn't as bad as you would think for Ted Ginn either. In the, in the games he has played so far this year for the Saints, he has 16% of their total targets and 38% of their deep targets. So a lot of work down the field for Ted Ginn, exactly what you would expect for a guy of his skill set. I think you could also consider Keith Kirkwood. He is seven or seven thousand dollars for the single game slate, so not a huge discount from Ted Ginn, which is why I do prefer Ted Ginn because Ginn is the guy more likely to get work down the field. But Kirkwood, if you need those extra five hundred dollars, did get an end zone target last week and turn that into a touchdown. He also ran more routes than Ted Ginn, so Kirkwood is in play. But Ted Ginn still did run twenty eight routes out of thirty eight dropbacks, according to Pro Football Focus. That's a pretty good number. Seven targets in that game for Ted Ginn. Three of those were deep. So when I look at the salary for Ted Ginn at seventy five hundred dollars. It says to me that it's not quite reflective of what his role is in this offense. So I love the upside, maybe not the best floor, but I think there is still a floor there for Ted Ginn to at least be involved and be on the field. So Ginn does come with volatility, but if he does hit the top side of that volatility, it could lead to really good things, especially at this salary. Seven and eight targets, respectively, since Ted Ginn returned from injury, and he is a veteran, uh, you would hope, with the ability to step up in a big game. Okay, so there you have it. All of the uh, recommendations by Jim Sonis for the NFC Championship single game slate. We still have to talk about the AFC Championship, so we'll take a quick break and then do that when we come back, and we'll see you in a minute. We're back on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Maria Marino, once again from Fantasy Sports Network and Jim Sonis from Number Fire. This time, we are going to break down the AFC Championship single game slate uh, taking place Sunday in the NFL. We'll have two studs for you, two mid-tier options for you, and a couple of value plays for you. Pretty much anything you could really ask for. Jim, the first stud is at quarterback. Uh, it's a guy named Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. You might have heard of him. <laughs> yeah, pretty weird play to throw out here, Maria. <laughs> so I, it might be a tough sell to get Patrick Mahomes, but I think when you look at this game, we talked in the NFC Championship game about how there were a lot of guys you could you could say you want in your MVP slot. I don't think that discussion is nearly as broad for this game between the Chiefs and the Patriots. I think kind of thing is just Patrick Mahomes. He has scored at least 17.82 FanDuel points in every game he has played this year, not just the home games. That is every game he has played. So the floor for Mahomes has been just insane this year. And as you know, the upside has been there too. He has had at least 30 FanDuel points four times this year. He has had at least 25 points 10 times. That is an insane hit rate. And this Patriots defense just does not play as well on the road as it does at home. They've allowed 24 points per game on the road this year compared to 17 per game at home. And remember, their sample of games on the road includes games against Josh McCown and Derek Anderson and Blake Bortles. Patrick Mahomes might be a little bit better than those guys. I know it's, a, again, a pretty tough sell, but he is $16,500 on FanDuel. But I think the safety he gives in, the, in that MVP slot is absurd. You could, you know, always plug in a guy like Tyreek Hill or Damian Williams there as well because those guys have upside and they could outscore Patrick Mahomes. But from a probability distribution perspective, it is most likely that Patrick Mahomes is the highest scoring player in this game. So to me, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to put Patrick Mahomes in that MVP slot and then build from there. Last time the Chiefs played the Patriots in a loss, uh, Mahomes still had 352 yards, four touchdowns. And this weekend, he's projected to reach 24 fantasy points on FanDuel. I'd take it from Jim and just don't overthink this one. <laughs> All right, another stud. Going into the AFC Championship at receiver, it's Julian Edelman. Jim, what do you like about him? Yeah, with Edelman, the price tag is pretty lofty. He is $14,500, and that is not a small sta small salary, especially when you got Tyreek Hill and Tom Brady all in that same tier, and you could just use them instead of Edelman. But I think 
what you get from Edelman is pretty attractive with all the volume he has been getting recently. If we look since Josh Gordon left the team, Edelman has 29% of the team's total targets. He has 46% of their deep targets. And again, this is Julian Edelman we're talking about. He's getting a lot of deep targets and 15% of the red zone targets. Overall, Edelman this year has had a fantastic role in the red zone. And that has still been true, even with Josh Gordon being gone. Now, Tom Brady, looking at him, Ever since Gordon left the team, he's not been throwing deep, just 13 total deep attempts out of a t out of 100 attempts uh, for Brady in the three games since Josh Gordon left. And that's a downside for Tom Brady. But what it does is it feeds a ton of volume to Julian Edelman and also to James White. So Edelman's floor is outrageous. His ceiling is also good, as he showed last week with 150 receiving yards in that win over the Chargers. This Chiefs defense can be vulnerable over the middle, so... I think there are a lot of things that provide safety and upside to Julian Edelman to outweigh the concerns that he does carry with that salary at $14,500. So you could go elsewhere here, but I think that Edelman, at least when you add in the volume and uh, everything that's working in his favor, I still think he is worth his salary here. He really does seem like Tom Brady's go-to. And last week he had a season high in targets at 13 this week, projected to reach over 13 fantasy points on FanDuel. Up next, some mid-tier plays that you should consider for the AFC Championship single game slate. How about Damian Williams of the Chiefs? Yeah, I know I was kind of stretching it here by classifying Damian Williams as being mid-tier, but he's $13,000. And I think when you look at this slate, there are enough value plays on both sides where you can totally get uh, Patrick Mahomes, get in a second stud, and then still afford Damian Williams at $13,000. And I really would love to do so, given the usage he showed last week. 75% of the snaps for Williams. He had 25 carries and six targets. That's like the best workload we saw in the divisional round, and I won it on my rosters, especially with Williams being a home favorite for this weekend. Now, we could see Spencer Ware be back, but in practice on Wednesday, Spencer Ware was limited, the same thing that he was last week before eventually uh, being inactive for that game. So to me, I'm not super concerned about Spencer Ware, even if Ware does come back. It seems like Williams has done enough to really be the bell cow back of this high-powered offense. As mentioned, this Patriots defense can be exploitable on the road. They've allowed 4.83 yards per carry to opposing backs. And Williams' true appeal, I think, is what he does in the passing game. We've seen uh, running backs in this Chiefs offense in games that Sammy Watkins has been active. They have 10% of the team's targets. That's not a bad number. And a lot of that work has come in the red zone as well. So to me, Williams is just underpriced. He is $13,000, kind of tough to afford, but I think with all the salary-saving wide receivers we have in this game, I'm going to do whatever I can to prioritize getting Damian Williams in there and stacking it with his quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Since week 14, he's found the end zone in every game. Uh, this Sunday, Damian Williams is projected to reach over 16 fantasy points on FanDuel. Now, another mid-tier priced play, it's a kicker. Yay, <laughs> talking about kickers um, because we need those to fill these lineups. Yeah, absolutely. And Harrison Butker, I think that he kind of fits the same formula as we discussed with Will Lutz, where he is at home and favored. And that is always a scenario in which I'm going to be pretty comfortable using a kicker in my single game lineup. Now, when you look at this game, people will point to the weather and say, hey, it's harder to kick when it's cold out. But Butker also was in these same conditions last week, actually a bit worse because there was precipitation there as well. Whereas this week, it's just cold with no winds to worry about for either side. In that game, Butker was four for four on extra points and hit his lone field goal attempt. So in the cold weather, Harrison Butker was still able to come through. If we look at the home games this year for Harrison Butker, he has averaged 8.9 FanDuel points per game. He has had double digits in five separate games this year, including 18 points on the road against the Patriots. Now, if you're if you're looking at uh, this from another perspective, if you use Patrick Mahomes, Damian Williams, and Harrison Butker, there is a pretty good chance that gets you access to every single point that the Chiefs score this weekend. And given the fact that their implied total is somewhere near 30, 
that could be quite a bit of points before you even discuss yardage and then the bonuses for a guy like Butker for longer field goals. So yes, it's a concern uh, to use a kicker in colder temperatures, but I don't think that concern is high enough to push me off of Harrison Butker, especially with the big floor he provides and the fact that he could get me exposure to every point this really good offense scores. That's the key right there. Assuming this offense remains potent and, and just is scoring often, you get Harrison Butker on top of that. He's cheaper uh, than the other kicking option on this slate and projected to reach nine fantasy points on FanDuel. Finally, we have some value plays to throw your way for the AFC Championship slate. And the first one is surprising to me that he's actually considered a value play yeah. considering how well he did last week at Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I think that that's kind of the big appeal here, Maria, is that he probably shouldn't be a value play because the role that Sammy Watkins has had for the Chiefs has been really good. In the games he's played at least half the snaps, he has 20% of the team's overall targets along with 20% of their red zone targets. And to get a guy with those market shares at $8,000 for a single game slate to me is really, really attractive. So I love Watkins from that perspective. But also, when you think about Bill Belichick, he always wants to take away the opposing team top options and for the Chiefs it's pretty clear those guys are Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill that's not going to be Sammy Watkins so I think that if Belichick devotes all of his resources to stopping those two guys that should allow Mahomes to pump some volume over towards Sammy Watkins and get him open against his defense and let him do his thing last week Sammy Watkins played more than 90% of the snaps. He had eight targets to go for 62 yards. And again, he's had that good workload the entire year when he's been healthy. He was a full participant in practice on Wednesday. So no lingering health concerns here. And Watkins at $8,000 allows you to afford those high price studs like Patrick Mahomes, like Damian Williams. Yes, it's a bit concerning to not use guys like Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill. But I think given the salary that Watkins carries, I'm totally okay with fading them uh, just because Watkins is so cheap. Bill Belichick can only put so much attention on certain Chiefs weapons when he's, you know, creating his defensive mm -hmm. game plan that should benefit Sammy Watkins, who has shown he can perform when he gets the opportunity. One more value play we want to throw out there. It's Chris Hogan of the Patriots. The salary is 7,500 bucks. Yeah, that's just that's really cheap. And I'll absolutely take that for sure, because with Hogan, the production has not been there since Josh Gordon left, but the volume really has. He had 16 percent of the Patriots targets in the three games since Josh Gordon left the team. He's been running routes the entire year, but just wasn't getting volume. But now with Josh Gordon gone. Tom Brady's got to throw it somewhere, and occasionally that has been in Chris Hogan's direction. He has also gotten 31% of the deep targets with 25% of the red zone targets. And what that does is it gives you two separate paths to upside for Chris Hogan. He could haul in a long, uh, a long ball, or he could catch a touchdown, which gets you six points super easily. So... I think that's pretty much all you need for him to pay off at this salary at $7,500. I think that if I'm deciding between Chris Hogan and Sammy Watkins, I would decide to go with Watkins over Hogan. But honestly, given all the high salary players in this game, I'm on board with using both those guys and seeing the flexibility that they do give you on the top end. So maybe you just start your lineup by plugging in these two value guys and then seeing what else you can afford because both Hogan and Watkins are getting decent volume. They've got uh, some skills in there as well. Their salaries are super low, so I'm not opposed to using both. But if forced to choose, I would likely go Watkins here. Uh, if you need the extra $500, Hogan's a pretty good play too. Sounds logical to me, Jim, although I must say our producers, they're talking smack to you again. They've already <laughs> called you a masochist in the past yeah. in, in recent memory, and today – uh, they are ribbing you for apparently like liking to burn money or maybe yeah. you're just living <laughs> in 2019. Um, hey, I'm with you. I get the reasoning. Chris Hogan, he's value. That's what it's about. Save a little money, yeah. spend elsewhere. Anyway, Jim, thanks so much for all of your insight, for all of the recommendations. We appreciate it. And we hope all you appreciate it as well. And if you Want more content? You can just go to fanduel.com slash the duel, click on videos, or subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Fantasy Sports Network. It's going to be such a fun Sunday. It all gets underway 
at 3.05 p.m. Eastern with the Rams visiting the Saints and then in the AFC at 6.40 Eastern as the Patriots visit the Chiefs. Thanks for watching, guys.